Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 28th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we're going to wrap up our discussion on string functions and we're going to check out a few more. So the first method that we are going to check out is the replace method and uh, as the name suggests the method replaces a part of a string or uh, an entire string with a new string. Right. So let me create a string object first and I'll uh, call it str1 and uh, I'll give it the following value I once had uh, fox right which is not true but I'm just creating the string object with this text and let's say I want to replace the word fox in the string with the word lion right so currently if I view the contents of the string the text that I have in it is I once had a fox now let's say I want to replace uh, you know the word fox with the the word lion so the way I'm going to do that is by typing in str1 which is the name of my string object and then follow that up with a full stop a dot operator or a period whatever you guys want to call it and then the name of the function replace right and uh, in within parentheses i'm going to pass two arguments to the function the first one is going to be the text that i want to replace so let's say i want to replace the text fox right so i'll have to pass it within single quotes obviously because it's a part of a string right and uh, then the second argument is going to be what i want this text to be replaced with so let's say i want to replace it with the line so i'll type in line within single quotes as a second argument when i press the enter key i see the text of the string str1 but instead of the word fox i see the word line right so fox has been replaced by line that's all about the replace function. The next method that we're going to check out is the split method. And uh, the split method splits a string on the occurrence of an optional delimiter found as an argument, right? That's the proper formal definition of the function. And I'm just going to demonstrate it to you to explain what it does. So I'll change the value of my string str1 to Tom Cruise, right? And uh, let's say I want to split this string into two different words, right? And uh, I want to have Tom as one item and I want to have Cruz as another item. So the character on the basis of which I want the split function to work is the space character, right? Because there's a space between Tom and Cruz and that's how Python is going to figure out that it has to split the string, you know, in two words, Tom and Cruz. Now, if there was another character other than the space character between the words Tom and Cruz, and if I wanted, you know, the split function to work on that, then I would have had to pass that character within single quotes as an argument to the split function. But in this case, you know, the space character is actually the default delimiter for the split function. So we don't have to pass in anything. So I'll simply type in str1, str1, and then uh, the dot operator, and then the name of the function split, and uh, within parentheses as I said you know since space is the default delimiter I don't have to pass anything you know there you go I see a list with two items the first one is the first word from the string uh, Tom Cruise and the second one is the second word from the string Cruise Tom Cruise right so that's it about the split function the next method that we're going to check out is the strip method and this method performs trimming on both ends. So in the last tutorial, we checked out the L strip and R strip methods, and we observed that the L strip method removes characters from the left part of a string, and the R strip method removes characters from the right part of a string. The strip method does both things simultaneously, right? So I'll change the value of my string object str1 to something like I'll have a few hash characters first, and then I'll type in some text like good morning and uh, then I'll have a few more hash characters, right? So if I would have used the else strip method on this string with the hash character passed as an argument, it would have only removed these characters, you know, the ones that you see at the beginning of the string. And if I would have used the R strip method, only the characters at the end would have been removed. But if I use the strip method, let me demonstrate what that does, str1.strip and uh, within parentheses and single quotes, I'll pass in the character hash when I press the enter key, I just see the text good morning. So, you know, the hash characters have been removed from both ends of the string from the beginning as well as the end. So the next method that we're going to check out is the swap case method. And uh, this is a very simple method to understand. It converts the lowercase characters uh, to uppercase characters and vice versa, right? So I'm again going to change the value in my str1 string object and I'm going to change it to something like I love Python. So as you guys can see, the first alphabet in the string is the alphabet I, which is an uppercase alphabet here. And uh, then I have the word love, which has all characters in uppercase. And then I have the word Python, which has all characters in lowercase. I'll press the enter key to create the string object. And if I use the swap case method with this string object, I type in swap case, 
and uh, within parentheses I don't have to pass in anything it doesn't take in any arguments I'll simply press the enter key to see that the characters that were initially in uppercase are now being displayed as lowercase so I is being displayed as lowercase I love is being displayed you know all alphabets are in lowercase and Python which was uh, initially in lowercase is now being displayed as uppercase right and uh, the last method that we're going to check out the last string function that we're going to check out in this course is the title function and this function changes case of characters in such a way that the starting character of each word is uppercase and uh, you know the rest of the characters are in a uh, small case right so if i execute the title method with the string object str1 i'll type in t-i-t-l-e and uh, within parentheses i don't have to pass in any argument when i press the enter key i see that you know the starting alphabet of the word love which is l is being displayed as uppercase and the starting alphabet of the word python uh, which is p is also being displayed as uppercase and all other characters in these two words are being displayed as lowercase and since the word you know the first alphabet of the string is actually i which is you know a single character that's obviously being displayed as an uppercase alphabet right so i hope you guys had fun watching this tutorial i'll see you in the next video in which we'll discuss more interesting python features and i hope you guys uh, are enjoying this course and you may subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i'll see you in the next video till then take care